Good morning, everyone. My name is Todd, and I'm going to be your logic tutor today. Um, and today we are calculating truth values for large complex statements where we have some unknown values, okay? Uh, for exercises, A will be true, B will be true, C will be true, the beginning of the alphabet will be true, X, Y, and Z will be false. And uh, the statement constants L, M, and N those will be our unknowns. I want to begin by doing some very, very, very basic uh, calculations where we have an unknown. Okay, uh, this problem right here. Uh, A, we, are, we know to be true. Um, so let me write true right here. Now L is unknown, so L could be true or it could be false. I'll indicate it by doing that. Um, and since A is always true, I'm going to say it's true over true. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the numerators first, this true up here and this true up here, and see what uh, we get for the conjunction. So I'm looking for the case where both uh, parts are true. So this would be up here, line one, uh, going over to the conjunction, and I see that it is true. So, if I'm calculating the truth value of the numerator, as it were, uh, it's true. Okay, now let's do the denominator. Uh, the bottom part, A is, of course, going to be true again, right there. But this time, we're going to suppose that L could be false, because remember, L is unknown. So now we're looking for a case where the first conjunct is true and the second is false. That would be this right here, line two. And if we go over to the conjunction, we see that the truth value is false. So I'm going to indicate that by writing false in the uh, denominator. So since we got true for the numerator and false for the denominator, what that means is the truth value of A and L depends it could be true or false depending on what L is, so we don't actually know the value of A and L if L is unknown. So we'll write a question mark or we'll write something like unknown truth value here. Okay, uh, let's try another one. X and L. Remember, X is assumed to be false. Um, and I'm going to write false over false. L is an unknown, so it could be true or it could be false. So we're going to see what happens in either case. So first, let's do the numerators, as it were, false and true. What is the truth value of that for the conjunction? So let's look back up here. This would be case three. The first conjunct is false, the second one is true. Go over to the conjunction, we see that it is false. So we're going to write false. All right, so that was the numerator, but now we're going to suppose that L could be false. So we're looking for the case where the first conjunct is false and the second conjunct is false. That would be case four. Going over to the conjunction, and we're going to see that it is false. So we're going to write false underneath. Now, since we get the value of false in either case where L is true or L is false, it doesn't matter what L is, this whole expression is going to be false. All right, let's do another one. Um, L is going to be unknown, so that's true or false. And uh, A is always true, so we'll suppose true and true. Let's see what happens in either case. True or true. What's the value of true or true? We're looking for a case where the first disjunct is true and the second disjunct is true. That would be line one up here. And we're looking at the disjunction, and we see that it's true. So let's come back down here and write true. Now let's look at the <coughs> denominator, as it were. We're assuming A is true and X or L is false. So we're looking for the first disjunct is true, the second disjunct is 
falls. That would be case two right here. Now looking at the disjunction, we see that it's true. So we would write true under here. So since our calculation came out true in either case, whether L was true or L was false, we're going to say that this disjunction is true. Okay, so when you get the numerator, as it were, matching the denominator, and they're both true, you can say it's true, and up here where they were both false, uh, we could say that it's false. Okay, if you get uh, a difference, uh, for example, in our first calculation, we said it was unknown. Okay, let's do one more here. Um, X. Uh, L, let's start with the L, is true or false, so we'll indicate that that way. And X, we're told, is false, so it's going to be false in either case. So the first thing we're going to do is try to figure out the case where the f antecedent is false and the consequent is true, so we're looking for false true. Let's go back up here in case we don't have it memorized. That would be line 3, false and true go over to the conditional and we see it's true right there uh, so let's write that in true okay now we're going to do the denominators as it were x is false we're going to assume and we're going to assume this time that l is false and so we're looking for false then false that would be this case four right here and going over to the conditional, we see that it is true. So let's write that back in true. Now, since our calculation rendered true in either case, whether L was true or L was false, we can say the truth value of this expression is true. One more of these basic ones before we do some more complicated ones. Okay, L is unknown, so we'll indicate that by true or false. Uh, A is true, so it's going to be true in either case. And so now let's see uh, what we get, uh, assuming L is true or L is false. In the first case, we have true, then true. So that's case one. Antecedent is true, consequent is true. We look at the conditional. And we see it's true, so we'll indicate that by writing true. Now we need to do, excuse me, the denominator as it were. The denominator is false, then true. Uh, so that would be case three. The antecedent is false, uh, and the consequent is true. We're going to look over at the conditional, and we see that it's true in that case, so we'll write true. Now, since we got true in either case of L being true or false, we can then say that this is true. Okay, so that's um, how we might calculate some of the very basic um, expressions with uh, unknowns. Uh, let me give you a couple of tips before we before we move into some complicated expressions. Here are some tips to remember. A conjunction is false if any conjunct is false. So uh, what I mean is suppose you have a false and anything. Well, if you look up the truth values, uh, this could be true or this could be false. And if you look on the truth table, you will see that we're going to get false, right? It only takes one conjunct being false to make an entire conjunction true. So uh, this would also be false. Okay, so that's our tip one. That helps us not have to go look at that truth table for the basic truth functions every time. Okay, uh, let's look at tip number two. A disjunction is true if any disjunct is true. So what that means is suppose we have true or an unknown. 
uh, the unknown could be true or it could be false. And if we go do both the calculations, we're going to get true in either case. So we know that this is true. Okay. And it doesn't matter um, where the unknown is. Unknown or true is also going to be true. So you just need one one disjunct to be true to make an entire disjunction true. Now tip number three, a conditional is true if the antecedent is false. So what that means is suppose we have false then anything. It doesn't matter if this is true, it doesn't matter if it's false, this whole thing is going to be true. Okay, a false antecedent means the conditional is going to be true. Similarly, suppose we have unknown, then true. This could be true or this could be false. If we go look it up, we're going to see in either case the conditional is true. Okay, so if you remember these four tips up here, uh, that can save you time. Uh, instead of calculating everything, you can uh, just know that uh, conjunction, for example, with a false conjunct is false. A disjunction with a true disjunct is true. A conditional with a false antecedent is true. Or a conditional with a true consequent is true. All right, and uh, now we're going to move on in just a moment to uh, calculating some complex statements